Hey everyone, Kyle once again, and hey, welcome back to the next episode of re episode review, <laughs> next movie review of which I'd rather be doing, rather watch this movie again because I had to rewatch this. But anyway, next movie review for Halloween month. Like I said, I had to rewatch this because you know, because I wanted to give it another try, and guess what? Didn't work. I still did not. I still did not like this movie. And this is the film back then. This is they said was, this was Sam Raimi's return to horror and all that stuff, right? And I'm like, really? So yeah, the film. I'll be re the film. I'm gonna be re. I. I, I rewatched it now because I wanted. To, I wanted to do this one for a, quite a long time for Halloween month. I never got a chance to. But that is of, Drag Me to Hell from 2009. Directed by Sam Raimi, like I said, the director of the Evil Dead uh, trilogy and his Spider-Man trilogy, and among others like Dark Man, The Quick and the Dead, and which I rather watch uh, those movies. I'm not big on The Quick and the Dead. It's a Western film with uh, Sharon Stone, Gene Hackman, DiCaprio, right? I which I rather watch that than this. But I but I enjoy Dark Man. I enjoy that quite a lot with with Liam Neeson, um, Larry Drake, um, Larry Drake. Like I said, as uh, rest in peace to him as as um, Robert Durant. Oh, I like Dark Man and the good score by Danny Elfman. The good makeup effects on on uh, Liam Neeson. I'm not big on his. I'm, I'm not big on his Spider Man trilogy. I am. To me, the best, the best. The, to me, the best one is Spider-Man Two, which that's the best one of that trilogy for me. As I like Alfred Molina as Doctor Octopus, he was really good in that. He made that. He made that work for me in that second film. But I just didn't care for the first one, and essentially, I hate number three, which my brother tells me, "Oh, I'm out of my mind for not like for hating number three. I'm like, Tch, whatever. And I always enjoyed the his and I always enjoyed his Evil Dead trilogy. The first one, classic. Second film, I enjoyed more and a little more on the on the humor side. And uh, and uh, I like Army of Darkness. But this is the, when this came out. You know, they said this was his return to horror and all that stuff. You know, and first of all, this is this is a bullshit thing they have right here, saying that it's an unrated director's cut. And that's not a good enough. They have it right there too for the second time on the cover. Two versions, unrated and theoretical. First of all, you get you 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 have it right there. You don't need to put two versions of this on on, on it on the cover right there. But the thing is, it doesn't matter because it's PG thirteen. So the only unrated version you see is a cut short. What? It was like a not cut though, but it was like a um. A ten second difference, where in the scene where he where she kills the cat, right, and like the theoretical version, we shows him like we shows it cuts outside. You hear the cat screaming. Here in the in, in the unrated, you know, she we see her like kind of like stabbing it. You know, we don't see it actually stab, but you see her going like this. You know, a little bit of blood splatter, but that's about it. You know, that's like, wow, a whole unrated cut uh, difference, a whole ten second difference. But it doesn't matter because it's still PG-13, you know, okay? It was like that a stupid unrated cut for that remake, 2008 remake of Prom Night, you know? Oh, that's that's an un, it's unrated though, but guess what? It's still PG-13. It doesn't matter. Same with this. And I just don't get the praise this film guy, you know? It has a 90... It has the, what is it? 92% Rotten Tomatoes? I don't get the 92% Rotten Tomatoes. Um. But um. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I thought that Danny Elfman did the score for this film, but no, it was Christopher Young. I think maybe maybe would have been better if. I mean, he worked with he worked with Sam Raimi with Don Darkman though, but I don't think it would have made a difference who did the score for this film because I didn't really care for the score on this one. Um, 
But anyway, just um, okay. The story is okay. Oh, which by the way, yeah, as a clear, as a clear, as a clear mention. You look at this poster, the poster of this film. You saw the movie. That's a, that's one thing. That's a dead giveaway. I hate when they do that. When they just give away the movie on on the poster of the movie. So there's no need to watch the movie because you take a look at the front cover. There's your movie. It's it's there, black and white, bright, uh, plain as day. It's 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 a, it's a, it's, a, it's the it's a spoiler, you know. It's the biggest spoiler. You look at the cover. It doesn't matter wherever it's in the movie because she ends up going to hell. So, hey, for everyone that's seen the film, don't bother because it's right on the poster. There's there's the movie. Spoiler for everybody. It's like they do the same thing with quarantine, you know, where they have the, the the last shot of the movie is on this. Same thing with quarantine. The last shot is on the poster of that movie too. Which is worse, this or quarantine? Which quarantine? People make too too many freaking stupid decisions. I think quarantine was worse though because quarantine basically insulted my intelligence on the lo the the logic of what these people thought. You know, they make it too many stupid making too many stupid decisions, which I'm not getting to though because I'm not. That's another time. I already did that already. But anyway, getting to the story. Hmm. <sighs> Get into the story. Um, it star it stars um, Allison uh, Lohman, who pl who plays uh, a character, the a woman by the name of Christine. She's a um, she works at a bank as a loan officer, and she is she's ready. To, it uh, she wants a promotion, right? She wants to get a promotion from her boss, and her boss is played by um, David Paymer. Which uh, he's been in quite a few films. Um, I remember we when, when he was in City Slickers, but he's been in uh, quite a few other films. So, but uh, she plays as his boss, as her boss. And there's this other guy who who works for the, the bank with them. He also wants to get that promotion too. And then one day, this old woman, this old woman walks in. She has like one bad eye, right? Like one one bad eye, and she's asking, you know, if if she wants to ask for another extension on her house, and so she goes to she goes to her um Christine goes to her boss David Paymer, saying that uh, she already had two extensions already, but um this is it's your choice, you know, you call it, and thinking that she can by doing this by get, thinking about her promotion, you know, which is this is the first mistake, you know, which. First of all, she didn't know she would go off the deep end on this, though, but still. Um, she says no. The woman freaks out. You know, gets on her knees, you know, grabbing the girl. She yanks away from her, uh, calling security. And then she goes and says, you shame me. I think that's one of the, the, one of the, one of the memorable dialogues of the film. That the, that the woman saying, you shame me. So, so she so, and then after pretty much after that is when shit hits the fan basically because you got this, you have this uh, he she has a boyfriend right basically she had a perfect life you know before all this hell started right, you know good job and all that stuff and then she has she has a fiance. Um, her, her fiance is played by Justin Long. Justin Long, you know, from, from Dodgeball, from Jeepers Creepers, um, the fourth Die Hard film, Live Free or Die Hard. I, 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 and, um, and recently, last year, he was in that horror film called Barbarian, which that was film was ended up being underwhelming for me. But I don't mind, I don't mind, Ju I don't mind Justin Long, which, oh, for how can I forget with Justin Long, he was in Kevin Smith's Tusk. Where he gets literally he gets turned into a walrus, but um, man, I, overall I don't I don't mind Justin Long, right? Here he's doing the best he can, right? But he's overall given nothing to do. So then he, of course, the, when the shit has, when the shit hits the fan, saying that you know, she um go of course though the scene in the in the garage where she gets in her car. 
And people say this all stuff is all of the, the this this is humor and this film is funny. I don't see what's so funny about it. And so, but there's a she's she's in her car and she sees this handkerchief fl flies by. Then the old lady is in the back is in her back seat. She attacks her and then she gets a staple staples on her face. And you get the whole. You think people think this is funny? Where oh, she slams her face against the dashboard, all of her old teeth falls out. Her false teeth falls out. And then, then she is a. a, a people think this is funny. I don't think it's funny to me. I think it's silly. I don't think I don't see what's so scary about this. Like, it's silly, but I'm like, because she has no false teeth, right? She tries to bite it. Like, she she's like putting her mouth on her chin. Trying to buy her, but thinks she has old teeth, so basically she's gumming her to gumming her, you know, gum, gumming her, you know. I'm like, what's the scariest? It is. This is as silly as shit, you know. People I think can disagree though, but yeah, he's like literally, she's like literally gumming her with her mouth, with her, with Christine's chin in her mouth, and so. And, and then after she gra she takes a button from her and she puts a curse on her. That's what that's what it is. She she puts a curse on her with a with a little object with this button, and she goes says soon it'll be you who comes begging to me. So and then that's when everything starts going wrong for her, you know like there's a, there's like a dream sequence. Well, not, well, not a dream sequence, but it's like a hallucination where she's in bed with Justin Long, and then she thinks she hears something. The old woman in, is in bed with her, and then she just vomits all over, all over her. And okay, maybe I'll give credit to one thing: is some of the little um, practical makeup effects and some of that stuff like that. Um, it's actually done by Greg Nicotero of Can Be. Uh, Greg Nicotero of Can Be, who did visual effects on a lot of horror stuff, including The Walking Dead and then, um, um, Wishmaster, among other horror, among other, uh, horror-based uh, movies, you know? You know, Greg, Greg Nicotero, which, yeah, but also have known for doing his work on the stuff on The Walking Dead, among other horror films. So he, he helped, uh, do, um, the effects, which, you know, I, I, I'm a guy who, who, who appreciates practical effects, you know what I mean? Yeah, I get it's kind of a gross thing. It's supposed to be a gross thing where she vomits like like these dirt worms all over her when she's in bed, right? And and then um, and then of course when this is when she's back at work, when she's back at work, um, she has a very a long nosebleed and just like sprays out like a like a hose right all over David Paymer, all over David Paymer, and I'm like, and David Paymer is like. Instead of like reacting, you know, like, oh wow, she she just squirted all this blood out of her nose. Holy shit, you know, is she okay? And he's covered in blood, and he's like, he stands there and says, "Did I get any of my?" Casually saying, "Did I get any in my mouth?" I'm like, so you're not really freaked out that this that, that your work that your employee had just like had a fire a, a nosebleed of a fire as as a fire. She has a nosebleed just squirting out like a fire hose, right? All over you. You're covered in blood. And he just casually says, oh, did I get any in my mouth? So you're not really freaked out about that. But no, you just say, oh, did I get it in my mouth? Wow. And then then, um, then that one other guy, uh, Stu, who works at the bank, who won the promotion too, she goes and steals um, a file from, uh, from Christine. Shows the guy he's a jackass. And she learns about that she's she's cursed because she has a certain amount of time with the thing the the button. She's getting up and eventually going to go to hell because of this. Now, okay. Now, first of all, the character herself of Christine, it's not Allison um, Loman's fault. You know, she tried the best she can, right? S script wise. Now, overall, do I think her character deserves to go to hell? No. But at the same time, I don't care about this girl. You know. I don't. I, just, I, I couldn't honestly care if she went to hell or not, but I'm just saying, overall, do you think she deserves to go to hell? That's the question. No. But I just, I just don't care about her character, you know? I just don't. 
I mean, you may may seem like oh, she did she did this because she wanted her she wanted her promotion, so she was greedy, and this is why it happened to her because of that because she thought only about her pr promotion. That's why she decided not to give this woman another loan on her house. <clears throat> so she tries to apologize to the family of that woman, but they they get mad or they get they yell at her for that. Especially, I think it was the daughter. I think. And so it's basically ruining her life when she as when she's at um, Justin Long's parents' place, and then you get um, a cake that had an eye that has an eyeball in it. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I've already seen an eyeball before, right? Appear in a food, right? You just remind me of him from you. You remember from the mini series of Stephen King's It, right? When all the when all the, the Loser Club are growing on up in part, it's in part two of the mini series, and we're at that they're at the Chinese restaurant having a good time, right? And by the time when they get a fortune cookie, each one gets one. Uh, one of them opens up, and there's an eyeball in the fortune cookie. It's kind of what you are trying. You're trying to take steal from Stephen King's It, the mini series, not Stephen King's shit, the 2017 remake, no. The miniseries I'd rather watch, but they had like an eyeball in a fortune cookie. So you try to steal stuff from that, and there's some also there's some interesting ca there's some some decent camera angles. You know, it's trying to be like an Evil Dead film with the with the camera angles. But thing is though, well they're trying to be like this is like the uh, Sam Raimi's un unofficial Evil Evil Dead four, but they try to do for for years, but they never they never got off the ground. And we never got to Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash, which I would have liked to have seen. I would have liked to have seen a Freddy vs. Jason 2 with Ash. They had planned that for years, but that never got through either. I would like to see like Ash taking on Freddy Krueger or Jason Voorhees, you know? I would like to have seen that. It would have been better than this shit we got with Drag Me to Hell. Or with the Evil Dead 2013 remake, or that, the new, that she knew when it came out this year. We can't get that though. We can't get a Frey versus Jason two versus Ash. I mean, I I enjoy the, the Evil Dead trilogy, you know, with especially when they were done on low budgets, but they were fun, you know. I mean, the character of Ash. Yeah, Bruce Campbell. Um, I guess in real life he is kind of a jackass sometimes in real life though. But the thing is, I'm talking about his character that I liked, you know. You know, it's very rare nowadays we have a horror film or a slash or whatever. Or it's always a final girl, right? But we, we ever rarely get a guy in the lead in a horror film, like in um, I forgot the guy's name from, but from from Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday, or Ash from Evil Dead, right? Or Josh Stewart's character of Arkin from the the Collector series, The Collector and the Collection. Which thank God I heard that they canceled that sequel, which I'm like good because they were in a fuck up the ending of the Collection, which I'm glad they canceled that. Because they were gonna, because I bet you money that they were gonna, that Arkham Josh Stewart was gonna die in the third film if they did that. I bet money, I guarantee fucking tea it if they would. So I'm glad that got canceled, and I'm glad I'm, st because that was a satisfying ending to the collection. By the way, yeah, and and Ark got his revenge on the collector. So I'm talking about a rare a guy in a horror film gets to be a Lee like Ash, you know. But I liked his character of Ash. At times I felt sorry for the guy. And he's in this all the he's by himself dealing with all these demons around him or these deadites, and everything. Especially it was more it came more of a comic, which it, the humor that worked, you know, because especially on a low budget, you know, like showing how crazy things are going around with are all around Ash. Like the lamp is laughing, even the dead um, the dead deer was like laughing at him too, and even diff better camera angle work and just better good special effects. I mean, there is a point where where she looks out, where the Christine she looks out a window, right, and you get the CGI boo scare of the demon face, just rawr, and Then she gets up, she gets uh picked up, and she gets she gets tossed around the room. But you get you get, you get a jump scare of a bad CGI demon face there, and that's where where she kills the cats, the little cat, and then but doesn't do anything much. So she ends up going to this guy who, um, which read the guy's name was the guy's name, uh, Dilip Rayo. Um, the same in the same year he would later star in in Avatar. But he, she goes to him, you know, when she um, 
oh, get her palm red and all that stuff, right? But it's like a, she's been cursed. It's like the most fear of all demons. So they try to have this seance, which ultimately is, is ultimately pointless because it doesn't work anyway. Even the guy said it, it didn't work. But they try to have this, this seance where um, they even have this goat with them, which... <laughs> The goat, you know, was probably more interesting character in the movie, but they have that when the demon possesses it, you know. And this woman who's with them becomes like kind of like possessed, trying to be—was it trying to be like a dead eye too? But also, it's, it's pointless because it doesn't overall it doesn't work. And then the guy, which I think she mentioned, but she met, she met him before this, so she mentioned from, he mentions from the beginning that that button that the start of the curse, give it to somebody else. You know, make a trade or to give it to somebody else. Why wouldn't you say that before? I think that would be much more helpful if you said that from the, from the very beginning of the movie. Do you think that they, that we should be going through all this trouble with the sounds and anything? But you could just tell her just give that curse button away to somebody else right from the very beginning. I mean, hell, I mean, if you want to do that, do it to a horrible person, like somebody who was in prison, right? Like a murderer, or who was a rapist, or a psychopath, or someone at a mental institution who was that crazy. You know, wish death upon, put the death upon them. That way, they can go to hell, and that um, she'll be fine. If that was, if that, if that, if I were in that situation, I would do that. You know, don't give it to an innocent person. No, give it to like a, someone who was like a more of an evil person that deserves to go to hell, like. A, a mass murderer who's in prison, you know, whatever. I'm sure you can do that through email, because I think they can... Not email. Through letters, you know, they can still write letters, right? <laughs> but yeah, that's what I would do. And then, of course, after that it doesn't work, and she, tell you, she tells him about this afterwards, which she could have told him from the very beginning. Like, you know, just give it... You know, she, um, she decides to you know, go back, go to her grave... To get to return that button to her. Oh, and before that, which I'm at this point, I'm like, oh no, you better not, because Justin Long, because Justin Long, he has an envelope too, right? It contained like a rare co a Liberty coin that he had, and then well, they at least know that um, both the envelopes they get mixed up, among some other ones, and I'm like. I already said that I'm like, even when I watched this, before I even rewatched this, I mean, when I saw this from before, at the time when it came out, I'm like, no, they didn't, they did not do a switch, did they? She did not, she does, they had to do a switch, so she doesn't have the button, and she has the coin, right? Now, stupid, now, stupid her, this is why a lot of times I don't care about her character, because she's an idiot, she doesn't, because you switch, if you think you drop the envelope with the button in it, we if you pick it up among all these um, other envelopes, whatever, do you think it'd be wise to check to see if it's still in there, you know, and then put it in your pocket, or put it in your pocket before you had before you dropped it, made or then, before you didn't know it was switched? Should have put it in your pocket beforehand, and if you do find it, check to see if it's in there. No, she doesn't check it at all. So she goes to the grave, which, and the stupidity of why she's she thinks she thinks she thinks she's being attacked is by her, from her own doings. It's not like the 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 dead the, de the old lady's dead corpse is gonna lash out and grab her or, not, or attack her or anything. No, is that at one point she gets her hair caught and that's not from that's not from the spirit or the demon or whatever. No, she gets gets it caught on her own and she's making all this flail around. She can't she can't get out of the grave. I'm thinking, I'm like, the, the 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 evil spirit or the demon is not doing any of this. You're doing this to yourself. <sighs> oh, oh, geez, yeah. How and when the how can I forget? This is this is this turn out this turn out to. Have you seen if you seen any of those car, any in any of the Looney Tune cartoons right with an anvil right? You know those Acme am, anvils right? This should have been a straight out of a Looney Tunes cartoon. She goes to a shed, which... Hey, yeah, remember Sam Raimi? Remember there was uh, an Evil Dead, right? Yeah. Uh, she, has a, she has a shed. Um, then the little lady's there. And she goes and, stands and just punches right into her mouth. Which, hey, that's a good... Hey, that's, a, that's a better term of, you know, fisting your mouth. 
Yeah, I know. You get what I mean, because you see that you see her, she, all of her hand and arm is going all the way into her mouth. I'm like, this is just. Oh, well, that's a better way. That's a better way of fisting somebody in their mouth, is there? That's a pure definition of that. But still, it's still flat out silly. It's as silly as her gumming her gumming her chin, you know, and then seeing her like a. Oh, oh, oh. But the point is, the whole one game, the whole Looney Tune aspect is that she just happens to have an anvil, an anvil that's strung up. I'm like, why? Well, first of all, why do you have an anvil that's strung up there? Why should not be on the floor? But you just happen. Why you have a uh, an anvil just strung up there on the ceiling? And then she cuts the rope, and the anvil falls. It falls on the lady, and bad CGI eyeballs pop out and land on her face. I'm like. That's something you would see straight out of a Looney Tunes cartoon when someone would how an anvil would fall and it would completely flatten them like a pancake. But here, it falls and just hits the woman on the head like it, like you see in a, in a cartoon, Looney Tunes. And just all the, the, the CGI eyeballs would just pop out and right in their face. I'm like... If this was done for practical, for real, maybe they will consider, and this is R-rated, then I would consider the, the director's cut, you know? If you make this R-rated and do more practical gore effects like that, you know, do that part practically, maybe they'll consider the R, the, the direct, the um, unrated director's cut. But that was just too cartoony and laughable and silly and just bad CGI of the eyeballs popping out. Which there were those, uh... I'm like, why we, why she why she had just have an anvil that just happens to be strung up? Why doesn't she have it on the floor? But whatever, don't think too much about it. So then that that was before the whole grave, the whole grave digging thing. So after all that, after when she uh, put it in the grave, the button she thought was, she thinks everything is go is back to normal. She's gonna go uh, uh, with uh, her boyfriend on this train. This is where we get to the ending of the movie, right here on the cover, on the poster, where Justin Long says, "Oh, um, you know, um, I, I, uh, I looked, I checked the envelope, you know, and um, you must have switched with my my Liberty Corner with this." Pulls at the button, she freaks out, she falls on the tracks, and then the demons are pulling her straight to hell. And Justin Long, he's looking on in shock. He's looking on and just totally shocked and seeing her girlfriend literally been dragged straight to hell. And as he looks on, he looks at the button, and he's, he's crying, see, horrified at what he just saw. And that's where the title, boom, drag me to hell. <sighs> oh, he said, okay, the, the, the little, um, the little, um, acting part from the, at the end with Justin Long where he's like, no, no, and just... The, just the horrified look on his face. I okay. Justin Long was not bad in that moment there. I mean, he shows how how genuinely horrified he looks. Because I, I like Justin Long, you know. Okay, I think he did the best he could in this film, but he was at the same time he was given nothing to do. Thing is, the fault is, is that Christine. She's a dumb character because, especially the fact that you know, oh, her envelopes. She uh, got her envelope got switched with Justin Long's, right? Doesn't even bother checking the envelope to see if it's the button is still there. That's hers, though. If she did, she'd go, hey, Justin Long, um, you have my envelope. Can I trade back? You know, but she doesn't bother checking it. You know, she's in that grave of her own stupidity, thinking she's being attacked, but clearly she's not. She got her hair tangled up on her own and. She can't get out of the grave on her own, and the part where yeah she yeah she made and she made the wrong decision. You might probably could say she empathized that she made the wrong decision. You know, to not to give a loan on her house. You know, but you think she was doing it. You know, because she was greedy at that. Uh, um, always thinking about getting her promotion. And the stupid and the nonsense like with David Paymer, you know, he gets splurted out a whole bunch of blood out of those coming out of Christine's nose. And all he's covered in blood and he doesn't fully freak out or question it. He says, Oh, um, um, do I have any in my mouth? I'm like, you're covered in blood, you don't freak out and see how that's not unusual. All you, but all you can say is, Oh, did I get any in my mouth? And the whole seo the whole seance was useless because it didn't work anyway. And the course with the possessed goat, I'm like, and then it was better. It was better with a laughing deer head 
in Evil Dead Two. Kind of when when it looked like when it looked was like it was possessed, it looked like it kind of like a goat though, but it was a deer head though. But I got more of that out of the laughing deer head in Evil Dead Two. You know. And the thing is though, this is just this blazely gives away the whole movie. You know. I don't know why they do this, you know. I don't know why they just blatantly what they did with quarantine, and yeah, you can say free Willy too, because the post the the poster has a shot of him going over the wall. He's free and all that stuff. So yeah, I, I can't I can't defend that part though. Yeah, the poster free free Willy gives away the whole movie of that part there. But the thing is, though, I I enjoy free Willy as a childhood film. But the thing is, though, comparing it to other films, this is far worse, and then even quarantine is much worse. Because those, because those are stupid. There was, there was a stupid ending anyway. Because they gave away everything at the end of uh, quarantine. Here they give away the ending of this. So as you know that she's going to hell because it's right on the freaking cover. The fucking cover, you can say, yeah. But um, so I, it doesn't mean does not make me root for the character for that. You want her, you see, you want to root for her to get out of this situation. But things, it doesn't matter because when you look at the cover, it doesn't matter because she goes to hell after this, after all this time. But like I say, it's not Allison Loman's fault, you know, it's not her fault at all. I mean, she tried the best she could acting wise. Justin Long, same thing. Um The whole seance, like I said, the whole seance was pointless and all that stuff. Why but why couldn't the guy who she went for um delete brow why couldn't she just uh, why couldn't you just bring that up from before? Hey, you can just give the curse button back, you know, get I'm like, why didn't you bring this up before? If I were I would give the button to somebody else, like a, an evil person, like someone who was in prison or something. Let them Big, because they did terrible things, so they're going to hell anyway. So why don't you give it to one of them so they can go to hell? And I will say this: uh, some of the practical effects, or lack thereof, you know, the whole thing with um, the woman vomiting on her in bed with all that stuff on her face. Okay, it was some gooey-looking practical effects there. Even the probably the the effects, the old lady, the makeup and stuff, right? You know, like with how she looks there. Although it's a silly, stupid shit with her freaking gumming, gumming her on her chin, you know, like she's like, that just that just looks silly as shit. And um, the whole thing with the freaking anvil falling on her head—that's straight out of a uh, Looney Tunes cartoon. I'm surprised that um, they should have put the label Acme on the anvil because it lands like a cartoon, and they get bad CGI eyeballs going out. Oh, so she had the silly shit where she just. Just fist, basically fists her in the mouth. Yeah, I know that sounds wrong though, but it really doesn't lie. You see her whole fist and arm really going driving right into her mouth. So you can't. I'm not really. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not really making that up. Is she really is fisting her in her mouth? And that looks silly as shit. But the whole Looney Tune aspect with the anvil that was even. Far stupider with the bad CGI eyeballs. I mean, that could not have been done practically, no. Because I'm like, if this way really could have been R rated with all that stuff, you know, like I said, this, I think I would be able to accept the director's cut, but no. But this is PG 13. I'm like, Sam Raimi, you know, just. And I forget, yeah, I've. <laughs> No, no wonder, because I. Because he also directed Doctor. Because he also directed Doctor Strange in the, in the Multiverse of Madness. That tried to be that tried to be a horror film, but no, I didn't see much horror like about it. I'm like I would like to see Derek, uh, Scott Derrickson's his real horror version of that movie, but no. But I'm not there to say because that film made close to a billion dollars, made 955 million worldwide, and it was became Sam Raimi's new highest grossing film, surpassing the Spider-Man th uh, three movie, Spider-Man films. I'm not. I, I'm not a fan of Multiverse of Madness either. So, and I just for Sam for that Sam Raimi, I just rather watch the Evil Dead trilogy. I rather watch Dark Man. I mean, I I'm not big on the Quick and the Dead, but I rather watch that than 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 his Spider Man or this movie. What else? What's the time on this? Yeah, it's an hour. Okay, it's an hour and thirty nine minutes. At least, at least it's not two hours long. And uh, 
the director's cut. That's a bunch of baloney. Only a ten, only like a ten second difference of when she's killing the cat. Wow. Whoop -de wow, what a big difference for a director's cut. A big whole 10 second difference. Sam Raimi. I don't know what I don't know what the problem was. His return to horror. My ass it is. Oh, this one from from, from Peter Towers from Rolling Stone. Horror movie heaven. No, this is not horror movie heaven. This is horror movie hell. That's pun intended. This is a horror movie hell, and it should, it should, this film should go to hell, just like the title suggests. Drag this film to hell. Please. Yeah. I just don't get the praise for this film. I don't get the 92% of Rotten Tomatoes. I don't. If people like this film, good on ya. I, I'm not here to say otherwise. I'm just saying on my own opinion. I don't like this movie. I don't. So, but yeah, there's stuff I would rather. I mean, films I, films like that were much better, you know, and just. Is to I think it's, I would like to see a Freddy versus Jason versus Ash, you know. I'd rather have that. But anyway, but we agree, disagrees. If you like this film, it's fine. And so, but um, thanks for watching. Stay. Take care. Stay tuned for more for come to Halloween month. Drag me to hell, yeah. This well, this film can go to hell. Pun intended. Later.